live? I think I'm live. All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we're talking classes and objects. Jules! Psst. Hey! Jules just left. He doesn't want to talk about uh, classes and objects. Stream seems really choppy. Is it choppy? We gotta ration our eggs. You guys are really uh, lively in the chat today. Lively chatting. Chatty chat times. All right, my phone knows that I like to do this. It's creepy, but we live with it. So I've been having a series of horrible situations to get here this morning. My computer froze and there was a wasp in the bathroom that kept landing on like glass things, like light fixtures and we have this like glass shelf and the wasp kept landing on it, which means meant it took me a while to uh, address the wasp situation, we'll say. Um, wasps are the worst. Um, I don't like wasps so much. Uh, anyway, I hope the stream's not too. It looks really jaggedy for me. As you can see, my hair continues to grow. I have this sort of bouffant thing going here. So. <laughs> Uh, so we'll see. Eventually, at the end of the semester, I'll have it down to my shoulders, and I'll be lecturing to a, a volleyball that I've named. So uh, there's a wasp nest in my balcony. When I was a kid, we had wasps throughout our entire house. It was terrifying. I went into my parents' bathroom when I was a kid and once counted 12 wasps at once throughout. It was crazy. I'm looking dapper today. All right, now you're... Come on. <laughs> that's just, that's fishing. That's fishing for something, looking dapper. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Oh yeah, oh, wasps. Brrr. Okay. I, ugh, ugh. So there's the stream. Let's see what the delay is. Um, I'm going with the medium delay because when I went with the low delay, it seemed like it would drop stuff. And I don't want you guys to lose. I don't want you to miss any of this excitement. This is too much excitement. Too much! All right. Um, so, yeah, today we're talking about classes and objects. I'm going to be using the extended metaphor of, like, adventurer classes so if you guys aren't familiar with like Dungeons and Dragons and things like that, it might be a little bit lost on you, but I'm hoping it still works. So uh, here's a gif of a cat being both a rogue and a cleric. I just really like this. Um, those of you who might be retaking the class from last semester uh, will be wondering, what? Classes and objects? We never did classes and objects. So this is something new we're doing this semester. Um, and we want to do it this semester to better prepare you guys for 202 so that when you get to 202 you've already sort of seen this stuff you're going to do it way way more in 202 it's going to get way way more in depth but you're going to kind of see it here you're going to get to practice it a little bit with python in the past it hasn't been done because python does classes and objects in a really weird way but uh, practice is practice right so uh, you'll have to learn how to do them differently in C++, and then eventually you'll come back to Python later in your programming career and be like, gosh, Python really does do this in a weird way. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Oh, gosh. Oh, man, there's a 341 student among us. Be careful. Look out. Uh... 341 students in here who have infiltrated can tell everyone to test as they go and start early. That's what that's the lesson you definitely learn in 341. And that recursion is the worst. You just missed the recursion lecture. You could be that old grizzled, oh, you guys haven't even seen recursion. I've seen recursion. Ugh. Ugh. Mm. Exam two is next Wednesday or Thursday. We haven't quite worked it out. I think 
So there are 201 classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, Thursday. But since this is a take-home exam, we're probably just going to release it on Wednesday and then give you a couple days to work on it, okay? It's going to be about 10 to 15 multiple choice questions, two to three programming questions, which will be somewhere between a lab. It'll be harder than a lab, but e questions, debugging questions will be a little bit different because um, most of this, I think the multiple choice questions will probably be on Blackboard and the... Uh, the other bits, the programming and stuff like that, you'll be submitting on GL like you do your other assignments and we'll be grading them. We will definitely be checking for academic integrity violations as well on the, um, the programming questions for the exam. So make sure that you're not copying off of each other. Am I lagging? Am I lagging? Or is it just poor Matthew? It's lagging. Yeah, it's choppy. I think, the, uh, I don't know whether it's my internet or it's YouTube. It's still watchable, right? I don't wanna have to like record something offline. That would stink, because I wouldn't have this lovely banter. Okay. He lied a couple times. Will the multiple choice be timed? Uh, I don't know the, the, the specific detail for that. That's sort of up to Professor Hamilton. Um, probably not, though. It's watchable. Cool. It's better now. All right, there's just, I call it internet wind. There's just some internet wind blowing through the tubes. Just gotta get that out, some bubbles in the tubes. Just kinda gotta burp those out and then we'll be good. Uh, okay, looks good, all right. Uh, all right, so let's talk about classes and objects. Um, you also have a homework six is out. Do homework six, it's recursion, it's other stuff, it's tricky, have fun. Uh -huh. um, yeah, if the page ever, like, completely... I, I, I've been uh, co-teaching 203 with Professor Hamilton, and uh, occasionally when I was watching his stream, it would just completely fail, and if you hit the refresh button, it fixes it, so... Um, I water cool. What? Uh, all right. So, let's talk about making our own time. So, up into this point... Up until this point, uh, we've been talking about data types as if they just, they grow in the woods. They're just a fact of the universe, like ints are a thing, lists are a thing, dictionaries are a thing, and they just exist, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, they're just there, and that's just how it is, right? Um, it's not entirely the case, actually. So data types are something that are created by programmers for programmers. So when you're using a list, you're essentially using a program that somebody else wrote that helps you manage more than one piece of data at a time. Um, when you get to 202, you'll actually learn how Python lists are written. So Python's written in C, so actually in 202, you will learn how to uh, write a Python list. Right now, though, we're going to just assume somebody who has, knows how to make lists has made lists for us and so on and so forth. But today we're going to learn how to make our own. We're going to make our own types and we're going to feel very fancy about it. So right now we've been having to use other people's types, but now we get to make our own types. We get to make custom types and that's very exciting. Uh, is it still lagging or are you guys just, are you guys just memeing? this memeage uh okay i can just talk you guys are just spamming stop spamming poor nino stop it stop it oh no no now you guys are adding each other okay whatever you guys i swear do you see what i put up with 341 student whose name i will spare you see what i put up with in this class good now. Okay. 
Are we learning how to code Python and C? No, you do not know. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, so another thing to call a data type is a class, right? So we've been talking about ints and strings and floats and lists and dictionaries. We've been calling them types, but they're also called classes. So those are pretty interchangeable terms. If I say type or I say class, it means mostly the same thing. Today we're going to start making our own. And when we make a variable of a class, so when, so if I have a variable uh, that is a string or is a list or is a whatever, we call those objects or alternatively instances. So you'll hear those two terms used equivalently. So you say this variable is an instance of this class or this variable is an object of this class. They mean the same thing. But uh, let's let's put this in the, the adventuring uh, uh, metaphor. So in the adventuring metaphor, we talk about, um, uh oh, did the, the GIF just freezes? That's not cool. It just freezes? Wait, what? Oh, and then it freezes again. Weird. Um, anyway, that's weird. Uh, okay, so think, so think about, like, if you're playing a game and you say, I want to make a character, and I want my character to be a wizard, right? That is a class of a character. That is a type of a character that you can make. But then when you actually make a character like Benjurus the Recondite uh, or something like that, like some sort of crazy wizard, that's an instance of a wizard, right? That is an actual, like, well, it, it is it's an imaginary person, but it's, it's an instance of a wizard type of thing, right? Just like... Uh, there are dogs, and then there is my Charlie dog, right? My Charlie dog is a is an instance of dogs, whereas um, there is the notion of a dog in general. And Charlie tends to override all the defaults of dogdom because he doesn't really behave like a normal dog do. It's gif, not gif. It's definitely gif, not gif. I know what you're saying, and I'm not going to pronounce it incorrectly even once. Also... Also, for today, I wore an appropriate graphic tee. Look at this. Look at this. Who gets it? Who can explain this joke here? It usually takes people a second. So explain this joke in chat. What's going on here? What's going on on my shirt? It's appropriate. It's an appropriate shirt for this discussion. It's an appropriate shirt for this inappropriate discussion. Jeff. It ain't peanut butter, it's a media format. It is an owl night, Matt. What do you get, Matt? What do you get when you do owl night? It's a night it's a night owl. Get it? Like you stay up late, you're called a night owl, but it's an owl dressed as a knight? Night Owl. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, so it is a... There is a class of things, knights, and this is, a, this is a knight that is an owl as well. So it's Night Owl. Ha <laughs> ha. Super funny. Who, love, who doesn't... It's a night night owl. <laughs> That's adorable. Actually, what do you think about it? Uh, it's, a, it's a night night now. owl. Good night, night, Al. All right. So classes and objects. Classes, a class is a type, and an object is an actual, like, manifestation of that type. All right. Why do we use classes? Well, why do we use functions? Functions aren't technically necessary, and neither are classes, right? Like, you could just write a lot of repetitious code and just have it all in your main program. But that would be a nightmare, right? It's like, why do books have chapters and paragraphs and sentences? Because they're useful ways to organize things. Actually, there's a book called Johnny... Johnny Got His Gun? I think it's Johnny Got His Gun. It's that or Johnny Get Your Gun? No, I think it's Johnny Got His Gun. And it's this book about World War I. And there's no punctuation in it except for capital letters and periods. And it's weird. You, at first, it's really jarring, and then you get used to it. Anyway, 
So these are organizational tools. So a class is another organizational tool, not have to change the windshield wipers, right? So what classes let us do is they let us group data and functionality in like a thing that feels like a model of something out in the world. And then when you're using that thing, you don't have to know about like what's going on inside because it's this nice grouping of stuff, right? You might already feel like when you're working on your projects, you might feel like you wish you had a way to like group functions that did similar stuff, right? Like these functions all deal with you know, um, charisma calculations and so on and so forth or whatever, like character calculations. I wish I could put them together in some meaningful way. Like that's not just putting them one right after the other in code, right? So classes are going to give us the ability to group similar functionality together. Um, also, it gives us abstraction. So it, it, it lets us sort of hide our helper functions and all these other things and basically present like, you don't know what goes on inside a list, right? You don't, you just know I can append to a list, I can get its length, I can splice it, I can do all this stuff. But you don't actually know how that's accomplished. Do we wanna know how that's accomplished? Well, yes, yeah, because we're curious individuals. But when we're writing code, we don't actually wanna know the nitty gritty details of what goes on inside of a list. We just wanna use a list, right? And so this abstraction is really nice because it lets people use your code without having to know all the little nitty gritty details of how you implemented it. Okay, moving on. So how do we make an object? So if we create a variable of a class, it's an object of that class. I've sort of beaten that to death. So for example, suppose we define a class dog. And if we want to create a variable of that class, we could do Charlie equals dog, right? So I have now a specific dog, Charlie, um, and I'm setting it equal to dog, right? We do the same thing with lists and ints and strings and things like that. It's the same thing. It's the same syntax. Um, so that means that we have Charlie, who's an object of class dog, and he's also adorable. He's also just super adorable. Look at him. Ugh, here he comes. Charlie, do you want to make an appearance? Char, come here. Come here. Do you want to? So yeah, once we run that line of code, we get a, uh, we get an object of type Charlie, or type dog, but it's an object Charlie. All right, are you ready, bud? Let's, let's teach some classes and objects. So how do we define a new class? So the following block of code defines a new class. You could technically get away with just class and then my class name, which is whatever you want to make it. So it could be dog, bird, fish, uh, airplane, whatever. So my class name, this is something you come up with. Technically, you could just put that in your code and put pass, but you should always put this def init thing in. And yes, this is two underscores. This looks like the if name equals main stuff. This double underscores thing is a way that Python kind of marks things as being like important or like part of the Python system. Uh, so the, what the init function does, the significance of the init function or method specifically, is that it is what's called when you do this dog method. So when I make this call dog, it calls this init method secretly. It's like a secret call, Shh. right? And it's inside our init method that we can define variables that we want to belong to um, objects of that class. Okay, so let's do an example real quick. Let's do dog. Let's do doggo. Man, you're really like observant. Usually you just get up here and you immediately go to sleep. All right. I have to put him in my lap. Apologies. He's gonna make a sleep. He'll be back in a second. But we gotta we gotta do some live coding. We gotta do some live coding. Are there any questions? 
Guys, be nice to each other. Be excellent to one another. Ugh, this thing always busts up. Alright. Classes! Here we go. Alright, let's make a dog class. Bloop. Ta da! Dog class! Make sure this works. Oh, actually, I can check it faster this way. Yeah, it looks like it's good. Okay, so, ah, ah, okay. Def init two underscores. Uh, if you use PyCharm, it'll help you out and be like, you wanna do this, right? So then uh, we start defining things like variables that we want dogs to have. So I'm trying to think of an existing variable in a class that you guys might be aware of. I think we've only dealt in methods. Yeah, I think so. All right. So what some things dogs might have. They might have an age. We'll default it to zero. They might have a color. We'll default it to brown. They might have what else? What else might a dog have? What variables would you want to associate with a dog? Like what variables would you want to associate with a dog? What makes Charlie Charlie? It's a big sigh. He's like totally content like this, by the way. It's like no problem. Oh, oh no. Oh, there's a bit of a struggles. All right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, we're gonna have weight, right? We'll default it, default it, <laughs> we'll default it to nine for Charlie's weight. Actually, we should probably make it a float, right? Boop, boop. Uh, what else? Um. So we have color, weight, uh, but we could have breed. Charlie is a, a, a Chawini. Defart. Fluffiness. We'll use the uh, abstract zero to one scale and we'll have cuteness. Zero point five as well. Okay. So now, if I want to make a doggo, come down here, and I do Charlie equals dog, and then uh, we'll do like print Charlie dot cuteness, and we'll debug this file. Can you use an input for this? Ah, uh, no, yeah, you could, but it wouldn't make much sense. Uh, so here, if we look in the debugger, whoop, 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 whoop. So I've made a Charlie, and it has all of these things associated with it. Age, breed, color, cuteness, fluffiness. And then if I print the cuteness, and I see, it'll print out 0 0.5. So that makes sense. We can also modify these things. Charlie.cuteness equals 100.0. He's 100 times cuter uh, than the maximum cuteness. Um, then we might say Charlie.color equals brown white. We might say Charlie. Dot Fluffiness equals, he's not very fluffy, unless you count extra skin, 0 0.1, and so on and so forth. And so we can just put a print down here. What happens if we just print Charlie? What happens if we do that? He's, he's starting to snore. <laughs> He's just that good at sleeping. So we look here. If we if we go down and we execute this line, charlie.cuteness equals 100, go bloop, and bam, his cuteness has been updated. And then we change, and then we change his color. Bloop, 
and then we've changed his fluffiness. And what happens if we print Charlie? It just says, dog object at blah, 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 blah. Can that Charlie attribute also be used for multiple information fields on a return? So uh, I think I know what you mean. So we could say like, uh, we could have a function make doggo that takes a weight and a color. And then we could do dog equals dog. Also, the coding standards, the Python coding standards, and therefore our coding standards for class naming is capital first letter and capital letters for each word. So if it was like dog house, it would look like that. Um, so dog equals dot dog, and then I could do dog dot weight equals weight, and dog dot color equals color. And then we could have uh, spot equals make doggo. Uh, we'll do 30 pounds and color black. And then I can do like print spot dot weight. And uh, if I come down here, so now we have a spot. Oh, it's not, oh, it's none. It's none, and I don't expect it to be none. Why? Because I didn't return it. Return dog. Rerun this. It's actually not technically camel case if the first letter is uh, uppercase. It's just proper case then. Because camel case, it's camel because there's humps in the middle, not at the ends. Technically. So then we have spot here. And we look and we see like, oh, it's defaulted to the Chawini, but its color is correct and its weight is correct. So, uh, James, to answer your question, you can use classes. Classes can sort, classes, one of the uses of classes is to have a whole bunch of data that's associated together and named correctly. We, another way to do this would be using dictionaries, right? But classes are just another way to do it, especially if you want to attach functionality to them, which we'll see here in a second. Like if we want to make Charlie bark. So setting all this stuff individually is kind of lame. So suppose we want to make somebody give us an age, color, weight, breed, and fluffiness. We can do age, color, weight, breed, fluffiness, like that, right? And then that means that I can change this to be self.age equals age, self.color equals color, self.weight equals weight, self.breed equals breed, self.fluffiness equals fluffiness, and then we'll still let cuteness default to 0 0.5. Ooh, it is about the thunderstorm, isn't it? Um, so now, if I run my code now, let's stop this, it's going to give me mad right? And it's mad. It's mad at this line. And it says missing five required positional arguments, age, color, original, right? Because remember, when we do this dog thing, we're actually calling the init function. And now we've said the init function should have five parameters. So we actually have to supply all of these things now. They're no longer optional. Holy cow, it just started ringing like, whoa, it is raining. It's raining. Uh, I don't think I have to close anything down here. That's good. If you live in the Baltimore area, you might want to make sure all of your windows are closed and stuff. Um, anyway, candle case is incredible. All right, so we'll give Charlie his his features, right? So. Um, Python will help me, or Python will help me out and tell me what to type in. So it says put in a, 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 an age, a color, white, black, a weight. And he's not, well, actually, he is 9, 10, or 11. We're not sure. Uh, his weight is about 9 pounds. His breed is uh, Chawini mix. <laughs> he's not even pure Chawini. And his fluffiness is 0 0.1. And so now we can take out all this stuff. 
Oh, and then we have make doggo. Um, and so if we have make, we don't even need make doggo anymore because now our constructor does make doggo for us essentially. So we've removed the need for make doggo. We don't need a separate function anymore. We have this lovely init function that's doing our work for us. Now, one question, you have classes and we have objects. So we're in class dog. Self is the variable that represents like the dog that you have, like the actual dog. So if I made a dog, when I do Charlie equals dog, self is Charlie in this case. So an age is what was sent into the function. So I'm saying set Charlie's age to be the age that was sent in. This is a, can be a confusing point. You can set defaults in the parameters, but we haven't figured out whether that's something we want to teach in this class. So I'm not going to teach it today. But you could set defaults on the parameters so you don't have to give it everything. Ding! Okay, so here's, we've made a dog, we've given it some data, and now this is really nice because we can pat, we can specify if you want to make a dog, here's the, here's the information you must supply for the dog, and if you want to pass around information about the dog, if we do cover default argument values or default parameter values, we'll cover it next time. But for now, we're not. You're in the harbor, it's sunny ASF. I don't think, <laughs> I don't know what that S, S stands for. Okay, so we know how to create a class, but there's another thing classes can do, and this is what makes classes so super cool, right? So let's talk a little bit more about constructors first. Uh, it's the init method, and it's uh, what's called when you make a new object. So when we do Charlie dog, uh, that's secretly calling that init function. And so if you add argument, if you add parameters and the range stopped, uh, if you add parameters to the init function, you're also going to, when you make a new dog, you're going to have to add parameters to that as well. Uh, so we use the constructor. If you want there to be data in the class, you must specify it in your init method. You technically don't have to, just like you technically don't have to not change a constant. Python will let you do it. But it is definitely considered best practice that if you want some data associated with a class, you uh, set that data equal to some value in the init method. Which for those of you, even the lecture assistants, this might be new information because we don't typically cover this material. But it's considered a PEP8 violation if you make a new class variable if you make a new member variable outside of the constructor it's considered don't do so don't do okay so here we've, we've already covered this in the live coding but it's worth going over again if we want some data to be associated with the class we initialize those variables in the init method you should always do it in the init method um class variables are visible their scope is the class not the the method which means this lets us get sort of global variables they're not super global variables they're just they're visible to an entire class why is this better than global variables because they're still constrained in some way someone's not going to accidentally change a dog's age because that variable only exists in the context of a dog can you show that violation real quick? Yeah. So, uh, spoiler alert, we're gonna let dogs bark. Uh, and if I said um, self.times barked equals uh, one. See, it's, see how it's given me anger here? It's like, what is it? you didn't initialize this in the init function. See, it says defined outside init. So this is because it's the first time I'm ever using it. So what I should do, the proper thing to do would be put it here and make it zero. And then I could do something like plus equals one. 
as frick. Awesome. Uh, the delay seems like it's much lower today, which is great. All right, so how do we make classes do things? I just, that was a little bit of a, ooh, preview. So methods look like functions, except for there's two differences. They appear inside of classes, so you define them inside of a class, they're bumped in, and their first parameter has to be self. That's the rule. And self is a reserved word, so you can't name a variable self. Ooh, Charlie's making my legs fall asleep. It's time to get held. Ugh. So, again, like I said, the value of self is the object that appeared before the period in the call to the method. So if I do I love Charlie.split in the split method, self is equal to the, the, the string I love Charlie. We'll see that soon. Oh my my, you smell bad today. He's also very sleepy. Oh, I don't think you guys can see him. You gotta be able to see Charlie. He's like, he's the dude. All right. Oh, I'm not on the slides, damn it. All right, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the slides for a second so we can talk about this. I'm not, my streamer, my streamer game is weak today. So when we want to have classes do things, we create methods. They look uh, exactly like functions, but there's two differences. They appear inside of classes, and the first parameter has to be self. And self is the object that the method has been called on. Called on. Okay. Now we'll go back to PyCharm. Now we'll go back to adding things to our dog class. Okay. Oh, Chaka. So Charlie will just sit here. He'll be very nervous about it. You're gonna stay here, right? Okay. So we made uh, def bark, and what I'm gonna do is inside def bark, I'm gonna do self dot name. Oh, we don't have a name. Uh, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do for i in range self times barked uh, print bark and what is it end equals nothing and then at the end we'll print. So we make a Charlie dog and then we do charlie.bark and then we do charlie.bark. Uh, show pop into chat what gets printed out. What what happens when we run this code? What happens when we run this code? I think Curtis is asking about some sort of infinite variable situation. You could have a list as a member variable for a, a dog. So what does it do? I've done bark twice, so what prints out? I got bark bark, all the borks. I call bark twice. The thunder just got to my house. So we'll run it. It goes bark, bark, bark. What happens if I do this? What if I add two more barks? What's happening? Wow, the stream delay is really low today. Bark, 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 bark. Right? Why is this happening? Because I have times barked. This is something, and then I could also just do like print, 
print Charlie dot times 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 barked and it says four right because this method bark it's operating on Charlie and it's adding one to the number of times it's barked and then it barks that many times so many barks and say I wanted to add Charlie's name in here self dot name equals name and then uh, name uh, I'll put one of his pseudonyms Chuckadero named after the Simpsons bit Canyon Arrow uh, and then in here I'm gonna do print self dot name says like this <gasps> right so all of these methods anything that's defined in a knit with the self situation with the self dot can be used in any other function I write so uh, I can do sleep self uh, print um, oops, self dot self dot name needs to slip z z z z z and then if I run this I need to call it right so we're gonna have him sleep in between barking sessions which is kinda how he do So there we go, right? So now we're making our own types. We're making our own methods. So now you can actually appreciate the difference between a function and a method. A function lives out in like everywhere. A method has to be called on an object because it, it lives in class world, right? So uh, let's, let's have him eat some stuff. So we're gonna make a list of Things uh, eaten, make it empty, and then we're going to have a uh, an eat method that takes a food, and we're going to say self dot things eaten dot append food, and then we're going to say uh, <laughs> diet or uh, yeah, we'll just say diet, and what it'll do is uh, print self dot name has eaten. self dot things eat. So let's have some stuff for Charlie to eat. Charlie has wandered off. Uh, Charlie dot eat um, peanut. He loves peanuts. Uh, Charlie dot eat. Don't try to jump off the table, dude. It's too far for your tiny little legs. Uh, we call them greenies. They're like little dental chews. Charlie dot eat the kibs. Short for the kibbles. Why do this instead of modules? Uh, because modules are different. Like you can't make you you I'm, I, I don't want to explain this too much because it's way out of scope for the class but um, you can make multiple instances of a class in a file like I could make another dog uh, just copy this spot which I've been meaning to do 
and then we're going to do this is going to be spot spots name is spot and he'll also be oh charlie's not white and black he's white and brown uh and we'll say spot is a doggo breed i can now have two of these modules you can't have two of they're just different things really yeah brian's right like they're just different they're they're different beasts you'll you'll appreciate it more 202 you'll start to have a sense of like the difference between like what's in a file and then a class um but yeah so we can have spot and we can have spot bark and yeah so then we want to uh, charlie dot um, diet, right? So what is this gonna print? What is spot dot bark gonna print? And what is charlie dot diet gonna print? So remember, I barked with charlie four times and I'm barking with spot once. How many times will spot bark? All right, so here we had Charlie eat peanut greenie the kibs and we're seeing that, yeah, so we can have lists as things inside of classes. Cool, you can have anything inside of a class. Uh, really, any kind of variable that you could put anywhere in Python, you can make it a member variable of a class. Nice. Notice spot only barked once. Why? Because spot is a whole other object. It's a whole different thing. And so the number of times spot has barked is going to be less than Charlie because Charlie has barked more. Here's a fun thing we can do, as Emma suggested. We're going to make a list of dogs, spot and Charlie. And we're going to go for dog in dogs, dog.bark. How cool is that? So we're gonna have both of the dogs do one bark at the end, okay? So how many times is Charlie gonna bark and how many times is Spot gonna bark? Okay, so here at the end, we had one call to Spot.bark, which makes it go bark, and then uh, inside this for loop, we have spot because spot's the first dog. Spot goes bark, bark, and then Charlie goes five barks. Bark, 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 bark. Now notice, I, I, can't, I can't do dogs.bark. James is pointing this out. This will give me an error, right? Because what type is dogs? Dogs is a list, right? It doesn't have bark. But the things inside the list have bark, right? So you have to be careful. Just like if you have a list of strings, you can't call dot strip on a list of strings because strip is a strip is a method on strings, not lists. This looks fun. Is this going to be on our next project? Project three. This will probably be forbidden for project two, is what Eric and I have discussed. It is actually a lot of fun. It's, it's a very nice way to organize your work because you can take a whole bunch of similar things and combine them together. To give you a more real example, though again, much of what I'll show you is one, poorly documented because it was made in a mad rush to get an office hours bot up, and two, uh, probably uses forbidden magics. Like, I mean, it definitely uses forbidden magics. But for all of the commands inside of the, good lord, where? All of the commands inside of, uh, that you use in the Discord bot, all have uh, classes associated with them. And so, enter Q, so when you guys do uh, exclamation point request, in the Discord bot, there's a class for enter Q, and it has two main methods. The first method, is is invoked by message so it says it look that you call it with a message and you say is this command relevant to this message and then if that's determined to be the case then uh it calls handle which is actually like do the thing for the message right so here's a practical use of classes is that 
For each command in the Discord bot, there is a class, and that class knows how to do commandish stuff. Now, this is covered in forbidden magics, like this is inheritance, these are annotations, this is threading and stuff, but I'm the, the takeaway from this is not, oh, I have to know all this stuff. You don't have to understand everything that's going on here, but concept, oh, you can't even see it. Damn it. I'm sorry, guys, one second. You can't even see it. Properties, uh, office hours bot. I was like going and I was so excited. So this is the, uh, this is the bots command for the request command. And so it is, it's a class. And so for me, it was useful to organize all the code that goes with each command that you can use in the discord bot into its own class. That way they don't get all just if I put all the methods or all the functions for all the commands in one file, it would be a hot mess, right? It would just be like, well, here's all the functions for the request command and here's all the functions. No. So I made a class for each one of the commands. So can I steal your bot key? No. <laughs> no. This is why we don't version private keys so students don't take over your bots. Okay. So that was just a, um, an, a, an example of this happening in the wild of my poorly documented code. It's getting better. Uh, wait, that's, that's also not right. What happened to the live? Oh, when it's in projecty mode, it doesn't get picked up by OBS anymore. That's weird. Or just at all, ever. Stand by. Please wait. System processing. All right. Cool. We're back. All right. So let's do some more examples. Why did your class not have self? Ignore that. It did have self, though. Handle had self. That's a that's a two oh two I was using something you learned how to do in two oh two. They're called static function static methods, but we're not doing static methods here. Just showing you an example. Don't get hung up on what the code I actually wrote. There's a lot of two oh one forbidden like a lot of past two oh one stuff in there. Like not previous, but like things that are beyond 201. Uh, the point I was making is that each command had all of the information associated with it and uh, all of the uh, functionality associated with it. Kind of, that's how I compartmentalized it. And actually when you're writing a Discord bot, the, uh, uh, the library that you use to write the Discord bot has uh, uh, classes for members, channels, they call them guilds, the, the servers, um, uh, permissions, things like that. So, um, object-oriented programming is alive and well. Uh, why'd you say my name like that? Did I say your name like what? Classes are functions, basically. Classes are groups of functions and variables is a good way to think about them and objects are variables that have access to those collections of functions and uh, variables all right cool uh, let's do more stuff oh first I have to show you this one so I'll show you that while I look at a thing, some Discord messages. I'm assuming it's. Uh, All right, let's go back to the, the charm. Wait, no, you're not the charm. 
You're the charm. I can make a module that contains classes that makes dicts to put in other dicts that are in lists within dicts. Sure, you could definitely do that. Uh, libraries, or think of them as just code. It's just another project. It's another project that you're, you're pulling in to use code from. The stream's lagging. Damn you, stream. Man, the, the, the delay is really low today. That's good. That's, that makes me happy. All right. Uh, -da -bum, bum, bum. Let's make another class. Boop, boop, boo, doo, doo. Let's make a uh, pack. Uh, yeah, let's make it. Let's make a pack. Um, and then we're gonna definite. So you should always definite. Uh. And then we're gonna have a name for the pack, and then we're gonna have, uh, yeah, that's it. Packs are just gonna have a name. Self.name equals name. Self.doggos equals empty list. Uh, def uh, join dog self.doggos append. Dog. Uh, self dot append. No. Self dot dog goes append. So we're gonna make a pack. It's gonna be a dog pack. A pack of dogs. And we're gonna give it. Uh, oh, Charlie made my foot fall asleep again. Here he is, one last time before he gets put on the floor. So he can snuggle up in some blankets. Snuggle up in some blankets. He gets cold because he's small and he's he lives near the ground and it's colder on the ground. Um, so then deaf join and then deaf pack howl. Pack howl. And this will just be like this. Self dot uh, for dog in self dot doggos dog dot bark okay so uh, down here instead of this we're gonna do pack which we which our dog pack be named uh, fang squad fang squad equals pack fang squad <laughs> Python. I type Python all the time. I don't. I don't know why, but I always type Python. With join and join. Oh, okay. Good question. So, what is the difference between this and the diff and this? Uh. This is a call to the join method, and this is actually just the join method. So this won't do anything, and if you print it out, you'll get something weird. Uh, so let's have spot join Fang Squad, and then we're gonna have Charlie join Fang Squad. And I'm gonna print out what this is just to answer James's question. Hans, if I recall correctly. Uh, and then we're gonna do fang squad dot, what was it howl? Fang squad dot howl. Let's do it, comma, self dot, name so what is self dot name gonna be is it gonna be charlie and spot or is it gonna be fang squad what's self dot name 
here. What is self dot name for 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 Fang Squad? Is it Charlie? It's Fang Squad. Yeah, it's absolutely Fang Squad. Um, because we're in pack, so that will print the pack's name. If I wanted the dog's name, I would I would go in here and I would say like, you know, dog dot name. That will give me each dog's name. Okay. So remember, this name in pack is a pack's name. This name in dog is a dog's name. Self.name is a variable that's visible to everything that's bumped inside of class dog. But it's not visible anywhere else. Right, it's not vis like it, it's not editable or like invocable directly that way in pack because pack has its own name variable. Okay, I feel like if I were saying this in class, I would get a lot of like looks. So I'm gonna say that again. Dogs can edit the names of themselves, but if I'm in a different class like pack. Pack has its own name variable that only belongs to Pack. Okay, so when I run this, so I have Fang Squad. I make a new Fang Squad. I have Charlie and Spot join, and then I Howl. So look, let's what Howl, uh, Howl does. So what is this going to print? We have each dog bark in the Howl. I'm going to I'm going to cut out this diet thing cuz I think we got the idea in the sleep. And we'll cut out a bark for Charlie. So, we make a Charlie, we have him go bark bark bark. We make Spot, we have him bark. Then we both put them in Fang Squad and then we have them do a pack howl. So, how does that work? All right, let's try it. I'm not feel like you guys are typically more no is everyone falling asleep is everybody sleepy it is rainy and stuff so i get it i get it guys but we're almost there come on All right, i'm gonna run it i hope you guys have thought about what this is gonna do let's do it fang squad spot says bark bark chuckadero says bark 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 it's a lot of bark right so that's how this works. Object-oriented, so this is called object-oriented programming when you make a lot of classes and objects and have them interact with each other. Um, it's very, very nice from a modularity standpoint. And it also just makes sense, I think, to us as humans to say charlie.bark feels better than like calling bark with charlie inside of it. It just makes more sense to us to have like the actions and attributes of a thing available to them um and it also we are one of the things that's hard about programming is the fact that it's very intangible it's very logical and so once you start doing object oriented programming it feels more like you're manipulating stuff than it is like you're you're just passing symbols around so um it's only 12.37. Normally, I wouldn't be awake until 4 p.m. You know what that makes you, huh? 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 It makes you an owl knight. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, that's all I'm going to throw at your face today about object orientation, ob classes and objects. Um, again, this is just kind of getting you guys comfy with the idea in in 202 you're going to cover all sorts of stuff there's a there's a lecture titled polymorphism which also sounds like it should be about adventuring um so anyway any questions before we a go go class versus object are they the same an object is an instance of a class so if a class is a wizard an object is gandalf 
because Gandalf is a specific wizard. 202 is fun. 202 is fun. What's Project 2 going to be about? Ding! <laughs> Project 2 is historically a board game. Richard gets it. Yes. Project 2 gonna be about it's gonna be a board game of some sort. So past semesters it was yes, last semester the one I wrote was Sim, which is a pen and paper game. Uh and then the semester before that was a fellow slash reversey, and the semester before that was Battleship, I think. I didn't teach a while ago. So the next one's gonna be a game. So you're gonna be game programmers! Except it's going to be a text-based game. Text based It's not going to be fun, is it? No. Yeah. Can it be tic-tac-toe so it's easy? <laughs> oh, John, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> How do professionals use this? It looks really cluttered. Uh, I don't know what you mean by cluttered. I mean, would professionals do charlie.bark.bark.bark? I mean, this is a toy, so you probably wouldn't write something like that. <laughs> uh, currently, what we have in mind is not a far afield of tic-tac-toe. It will be... It will be tricky, though. Don't give him ideas. Oh, I have plenty of ideas. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. You guys are not feeding me any new ideas. Um, typically when I get good ideas from students, they tend to be not super hard. Oh, okay. Well, if the students are TAs, I have to take the difficulty down because TAs do not know their, their real ultimate power. But... Uh, it's going to torture us. We're dead. I mean, I guess technically your first project was a game, wasn't it? Jesus, the semester of games. Maybe we'll make Project 3 a game. Everything will be a game. Oh, Ryan had Connect 4. Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, this officially ends the 202, 201 class. Uh, he's going to make us make Minecraft, isn't he? No, no, no. Uh, the fun thing is, once you're done pro uh, 201, uh, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with Python. And that's going to be what the last lecture or two is about, is uh, we, we, we limit you in this class because we want you to tone the brain muscles that are actually required for like solving difficult problems in programming. It's really easy, especially in Python, to go get a bunch of code that somebody else wrote and kind of like sticky tape it together to make it like make something really cool. But that's right. Like a, a mechanical engineering class isn't about like, okay, we're all going to go like walk across a bridge it's about how do you build a bridge so in this class we're teaching you how do you build those things that you could go and paste together because as you grow as a programmer that's what you're going to be asked to do i didn't go to watson and just glue stuff together though sometimes it felt like that you actually make new things and in order to make new things you have to have these capabilities so. i remember the sudoku project Sudoku Project is a, is a, is a legend. <laughs> I was not involved with that. All right. So again, I officially free any of you who have to go. I'm just going to go see what madness is unfolded in the Minecraft server. Uh, okay, it is, it is doing me correct. 
Is there a point in 201 where we're going to effectively learn how to interpret library documentation? Um, no. Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> That's kind of a skill in and of itself. It's really something that you gain from learning more about programming and practicing. Nothing like Quad Tree Project in 341. Uh, the current 341 Project 3 is giving the Quad Tree a run for its money, I, I must admit, in terms of being a particularly uh, heavyweight Project 3. If any of you who are still sticking around, and there's only 33 of you, uh, if any of you are non majors, and I mean by non major, I mean not comp E, not comp sci, next semester offered it. I'm teaching it this semester, and I'm going to be sort of co-helping teach it next semester with a new professor, my, but who's my very close personal friend, James Stevenson. He's actually the one who taught me everything I know about Python, uh, and just so much. He's extremely knowledgeable, very friendly, uh, very friendly guy. Um, I love him to bits. He'll be teaching 291, which is for non-majors, so not comp E, not comp sci. And that class will actually more directly teach how do you read library documentation, how do you, use, how do you develop a website, how do you use databases. Um, it'll go more into object-oriented programming than we get into 201. The whole class is in Python. Um, it, I think there'll be a smattering of like machine learning and networking and things like that. It's basically a cheese plate, a little sampler, if you will, for upper level computer science classes. Um, and which is really kind of a cool opportunity. Now, some of you will be like, I want to take that class. I'm a comp sci major. Uh, that's great, but you're actually going to get most, if not all that material for them uh, going through your comp sci major, right? So this is for people kind of the, the, the idea is like if we got one more class to teach you a lot of stuff about how to be an effective scientist um, using Python then that's what 291 for is for um, I'm currently teaching it if you're curious about it over the summer my lectures for 291 will be online at least for uh, like the, the, the post spring break portion of the class which is really where we get into the web development and stuff like that. So, yeah. 291 stuff is publicly available until I'm specifically instructed to make it not publicly available. So the slides, most of the lectures, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah. And it's fun. You can see it on my, my YouTube. You can make your own websites. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, our Project 3 was a... Uh, Pokemon battling thing you make a little website where it would use there's an API for Pokemon data and you could pull down the two images and so it would show the two Pokemon rendered sort of like how they would be on like the Game Boy games and uh, it would like compare their stats and have them battle uh, was our project three so and Cam is here, and Cam Cam is the is the TA for 291, who has been a legendary TA. 291 would not happen without uh, <laughs> the help of Cam. So what do we got? We got all sorts of stuff going on here. There's a canal. There's Oklahoma City. Uh, there's this terrifying... I want to go visit this house. Hopefully I don't die in the process. Why can't we do fun stuff? I'm offended, Curtis. You're not having fun? Oh my god, there's a lava moat. Oh my. Oh my. Uh, you gotta learn the basics before you, you... You gotta walk before you can run. Where is Anuar's house? Where is Anuar's house? What is happening here? What are these? Where are you guys getting like these these solid colored blocks? I guess you're using like sheep's wool. I haven't done enough mine. You guys are like level fifty Minecrafters. Oh, look at this house. I need to check that out. But 
I want to see what this is all about over here. I think this might be Hirsch's. Can we be a TA for Tier 1 even if we're a Comp Sci Major? I would only take Comp Sci Majors. If so, what classes do we need? Uh, I would like to take students who have passed 341, I think, for that class. Uh, because it's you're you're like a, a I mean you you're you're really co-teaching that class. It's fortunately the enrollment has been rather low. So what is this? This is not really a house. This can't be Hirsch's place. I can't imagine it, Hirsch's place being anything short of like an absolute. Um, estate. Hers is a, a premium human. What is what is this? What is this water thing going on here? Eventually, I hope to get lecturing off my Windows machine, so this you don't see this in like ten frames per second, and I can like play music. Yeah, you should definitely TA for two hundred one. Again, we usually only take students who have graduated from two hundred two just because it's really hard to help people with projects in a class you just took. Um, we make some exceptions, but usually there's a lot of interest from upperclassmen. Um, TAing for 201 is a blast. We have a lot of fun with 201. Oh, there's like a hole out here now. Oh, oh, it goes someplace else. Are there mine carts in here, blocks? So we have grading parties, which I joke is like a Liz Lemon party because it's mandatory. <laughs> um, ain't no party like a TA, like a grading party, because a grading party is mandatory. Yeah, you can, you can, you can definitely be a teaching fellow for uh, Comp One Hundred One. Uh, Professor Brzezinski is an awesome dude, as you all who took it know. What is this, like some secret hole? This is intriguing. I need a cart. Is anyone on here? Can I just, I can like spawn stuff into my inventory probably as an admin. How much competition is there for school jobs? It's pretty high competition. I get to pick from top notch students generally. Uh, check the box. Well, I check the box. There's a million boxes around here. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think I might have one in my chest. Check the box. The box. This is. I'm assuming this. This is the box. Do not see a card. It's a box next to the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at that box. It's in the ground. Oh! <laughs> oh! All right. See, the thing is, I'm just I I'm not on Ryan Barron level. It's pretty much impossible to be on Ryan Barron level. So is it? There we go. Oh wait, I didn't want to go this way. Well, damn. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night, sweetheart. Uh, we want it to go this way. Boop. I just... That cart has been rendered into infinity. I'm impervious to cactus. Pervious to cactuses. I am. I'm a cactus impervious. It's one of my... What? Just happened to the mine cart. Oh, there it is. Well, that was weird. Okay. Alright, now this will take me to someplace. Maybe Casa de Cam. Wee! Ooh! Wee! There's usually a lot of interest in um, T 
TA positions. And and you know what? I, I really think that's a UMBC thing. Uh, UMBC, for all, the, for all the, the, the grief students give UMBC, I think UMBC is, is, is really great because of how much students like to help each other out. Um, some schools can actually be so competitive that students will actively hinder each other. Um, but that doesn't ever seem to be the case. You guys generally are just like, I want to help out because my team <laughs> with like a cassette tape, with like a tape playing in the background. And uh, because the, two, the 201 TAs are just so awesome, uniformly awesome humans. Even Patrick. Come on, come on. Do I have to pick you up? Oops, I may have just destroyed. Oh, it comes off the rail there. Bizarre. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome back to Professor Johnson's backhanded compliments. Semester does end pretty soon. Not soon enough, right? Am I right? Am I right? This semester has been kind of a slog. Teaching, teaching virtually is not as fun, no matter how much Minecraft happens. Oh yes, Charles Nicholas is my. Oh no 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 no! Come, can, t, t, oh, goodbye. I'm going to be distributor of minecarts throughout our little world. I want to see... Oh, let's go back and look at the map. You at least do that. Dr. Johnson's wild ride. I want to see this giant house. Is this Anuar's house? We have quite the little village here. I'm so... Oh, who is this? Warning. Bees behind house. You should probably get that looked into. I did spend my morning having a duel... A, a mortal combat with a wasp. I feel like Zelda, or not Zelda, Link in the Zelda games where I'm just going into people's houses, taking their stuff. Look at all this nice stuff. Ooh, bones. And arrows. Ooh. This one's on yours. The little guy's on yours? Okay. So here you go. Somebody asked about on yours house. And I'll be courteous. I got yelled at by some some students. Not TAs, of course. This one, though, this one, this is a proper cottage. I love going into these Minecraft houses and they're just chambers. <laughs> they need more furniture. You guys need to furnish. We've got some lofted space here. This is nice. Oh, this is Katie's. Okay. It's very cottagey. I, I believe that. <laughs> Bombs me with fire emblem beams. This is an impressive mine. <laughs> What's in here? I have so much fun just exploring what the TAs have done. I have not done anything on this server. I just and I kind of I kind of like just coming in here on two. What is this? What's happening here? This is a this is this is, this is like ominous. Anuar's high quality humanity. Unimpeachably. <laughs> this all the door. This is underground. This is as well. This is so pretty. This is so pretty. There's like a waterfall. I'm assuming it's Anwar. Am I mispronouncing Anwar's name? Has he been too polite to correct me for... What the hell was that? Oh, is it just water dripping? Is it... What the hell is that? <laughs> oh, I thought Cam was telling me how to pronounce his name by spelling... ...my 341 section. And he's awesome. I think you're in Anna's mind. Oh, this is Anna's mind! Okay. Anna does know how to mine. Look at this. This is fantastic. 
This is like mining luxury here. What's, ooh, what's over there? This is there's so much happening. Oh, oh, what is this? What in the world? Is this bedrock? Is that what this is? I think this is like bedrock. This mine. This is an impressive mine. <laughs> uh, anything else I should see? Oh, oh, it's night. We can't have for that. I don't have any means of protecting myself. Your bridge! Where is your bridge? Are you at your bridge? Okay, I'm gonna teleport to him. Teleport crazy doc J to Z Rain. Oh my. Okay, alright. Was Oh oh I did not mean to almost murder you. Uh, I see. Wait, so then I feel mm, it's an XOR gate. Oh, it's a literal XOR gate. It's an actual gate that's exclusive or. <laughs> There's probably, where's the circuitry for this, dare I ask? I haven't done a lot of, oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of red zone stuff. But I know how transistors work. So I could probably figure it out. I'm the long boy. I'm the loud guy in front wall. Well, I never noticed that about you, Richard. Would you say you're the loud guy in front? You're not like a, a shrinking blossom. What else? What else we got, Ryan? I feel nervous going over that little gate. People have made like adders with redstone like calculators just kind of fun i'm kind of glad this is a vanilla server because this is even more impressive without add-ons all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna follow ryan for the tour what do we have here is this like your smeltery i can't read that sign shut off lever pull in case of emergency oh It blinks. What does this do? Oh, this is the power station. <laughs> uh, what does it power? Your madness? Richard sits almost dead in front of you, Curtis. It's just for looks. Well, you've succeeded because it's very, very impressive. And it's flashing and stuff. That's pretty rad. What is... I don't... This makes me nervous. This situation over here. What is... Does that do something? What the hell? What the? Why is there a baby zombie in your house? How is very fast? I guess it's not faster than the normal zombies. Now it's on fire. I did I kill your baby zombie? I'm terribly sorry if this was like a pet that you had. 
Why is there a baby zombie? <laughs> I didn't... Is that new? Why was there a baby zombie? I can't handle this. Alright guys, I think this concludes. I have actual work to do. Uh, like a ton of it. <laughs> the stairs retract. Because of course they do. To kill this poor fox, I bet. <laughs> that seems brutal. GG, well played. GG. Oh, outside. <laughs> nice. And yet still, still you had a baby zombie in your house. I saw something online where you can make like a, a tree farm with the moving things around. Is that... Yeah, stay healthy. I'm trying to stay healthy. Uh, I've, I've been losing weight because I'm not eating garbage out of convenience machines. Or uh, it's not, They're not concession machines. Also apparently have lost my words. Alright dudes. My dudes and dudettes. Uh, have a lovely, have a lovely weekend, work on your projects, or project six, homework six, uh, it's been a pleasure, I hope this class has been interesting and at least fun adjacent for you guys, um, if you have questions about 291 for next semester, especially if you're a non-major, um, let me know, I, I can't say enough great things about uh, the guy who will be teaching it, uh, James Stevenson. He's an incredible human being. Um, yeah, so go hop in the 201 Discord. You, if you ask, if you have questions that aren't specifically about your code, um, like just general questions about what you're being asked in the homework and stuff, pop that in the Discord because uh, TAs will see it faster. And then when you're, if you have that question, somebody else does. And then when your question gets answered, somebody else will just see it and be like, oh, oh. So having a question is awesome. Stay safe, everybody. Stay inside. Uh, again, I don't really have to probably tell comp sci majors that as much because we find our fun indoors. We're not, it's not that we're introverts, all of us, or that we don't get away from the computers. It's just that we're good at finding fun indoors. You know, that's fine. That's fine. Mm. Oh, I just received word that uh, the, our exam will be released on Wednesday together. So, hot off the press. All right, guys. Have a good one.